you were, had a disinflationary view uh, for, for the past decade and recently you've changed. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable, you know, to what degree you've, you've changed your mind. You don't change your mind often, but, but when you do and you see the facts change, you, you really make a pivot. Uh, the, the quantitative easing, the, the explosion in bank reserves that from 2010 to, let's say, early 2020, before the pandemic, did not cause inflation, despite the fact that so many people thought, thought, it, thought it would. Uh, why do you think that the huge increase in money supply this time in terms of bank reserves is going to make it into the economy? Yeah, so it's, it's different types of money, which is the key thing. So bank reserves are, a, are, are an asset of the, of the commercial banking system. They are, if you like, the liquidity of the commercial banking system. If you and I were bankers, it's kind of the money we have on hand to pay back our depositors. It's just it's not in the form of cash, but it can be turned to cash instantly. If we suddenly get a lot of it, the question is, what do we do with it? And if we kind of sit on it, not a lot happens in the real economy. And that is what's what that is exactly what was happening with that money from 2009 to 2019. It was affecting the asset markets because the Fed was buying assets from savings institutions, bonds, and accrediting them with new money. And of course, what does a what does a savings institution do with new money? It buys more assets. So that this this money sort of stuck in that ghetto. But the money that was credited to the savings institutions was a thing called bank reserves, and they were really kind of unused. So the only thing that's different is that the banks are now expanding their balance sheets and quite aggressively. And that creates a different form of money. I mean, people who borrow money from banks tend to use it in the real economy. They can, of course, just use it in the to buy assets, but on the whole, it tends to get used in the real economy, and that's broad money. And the history of that money is that that is the inflationary form of money because it affects nominal GDP, it affects final demand. And as I said, it's up 43% over two years. Uh, I'm just pausing. Just imagine if nominal demand now went up 43% over the next two years. I mean, it seems impossible. But a huge amount of that can now explode into, into nominal demand. That couldn't have happened with commercial bank reserves. It just simply couldn't have happened unless the banks had turned that into loans and they didn't. So that, that's the fundamental difference. And I see it everywhere. And I see it as a norm of government policy. This is the crucial thing. It's not a an emergency measure that was put in there. It's not that the banks are necessarily wanting to do it. It's the governments have suddenly realized just how powerful it is. If you can control, influence, cajole with carrots and sticks, the growth of commercial banks balance sheets, you can achieve all your wildest dreams until you get too much inflation. And that's kind of where we are already. 